what is your definition of a multi-asset income fund? Okay, so it's a fund that uh, is focused on generating yield. It's uh, mostly focused on conservative investors. It can invest across the entire spectrum, so from very short-dated money market instruments all the way out to longer-dated bonds. Uh, the fund that, uh, that I'm running at Lorem will be mostly focused on the shorter end, so focused on that sort of naught to three-year area of, the, of bonds. Some fund, other funds in the space will have longer-dated securities, but tend to be focused on that shorter-dated um, controls the volatility that, and the risk that you get from interest rate risk. Uh, then it'll have credit, so credit is an important part of uh, yield enhancing, so buying credit and enhancing yield. Again, you need to be careful from a risk perspective that, those, uh, that you're buying credits that you're happy with and that, uh, that um, are justifying uh, the returns and the risk that, you, that you're adding to the portfolio. Um, preference shares, uh, they're being phased out as, a, as an instrument, but they still offer um, uh, good returns, uh, but again, come with some illiquidity and also some, uh, some volatility. Property, again, can have uh, volatility, need to be focused on, yes, attractive real returns over time, but they can introduce uh, some volatility uh, into the portfolio. The same can be said about offshore investing. So if you have offshore currency, which you can have in this fund up to the Saab limits, that will introduce some volatility into the, into the fund. So need to be careful about sizing that. I will use overlays in the portfolio. When I talk about overlays, I'm talking about currency options to reduce the volatility of just having a naked uh, um, offshore currency exposure in the fund. And then there's the opportunity to go and buy offshore assets, so offshore dollar assets, typically f mostly focused on South African issuers that are issuing in, in dollar markets and buy those, uh, those assets offshore and then either hedge them back to RAND or have the dollar exposure depending on where, uh, where the RAND dollar happens to be at any point in time.